I'm going to create a new document in Photoshop. I'm just going to go up to File and New, or I could use the command keyboard uh, keyboard shortcut Command N, and I'm here in my presets here on my left and my custom setup on my right. So my presets here are recent, saved. I can make a preset photo setup, a print setup uh, using letter and legal and here are the dimensions it gives me and everything, even the resolution. If I go to art and illustration, web, mobile, film and video, it gives me a bunch of presets that you might commonly use. But if you do go to web, it's going to set it up at 72 pixels per inch, which is correct. Those are the proper uh, resolution you're going to use for those graphics. But if you go to print, it's going to set it up at 300 pixels per inch. And here you could actually change whatever you want. It's that letter. That's what I'm going to work with. I could change up my units of measurement to inches or pixels or whatever I prefer. But for print, I'm going to use it just like this. 300 pixels per inch and uh, RGB CMYK. Now, normally I would set up any print production as CMYK, but I'm always going to prepare every Photoshop file I ever use in RGB and convert it to CMYK later. Uh, using RGB gives you access to more functions in Photoshop. Going to CMYK actually doesn't allow you as many things, so I'm always going to keep it in RGB, convert it later. However, if I did go to web or mobile, it won't let me go to anything else but RGB because that's how you make graphics. This is your color mode that you use for web graphics. But once again, I'm on print and I'm just going to say RGB, 300 pixels per inch, 8.5 by 11. Perfect. Now I do have another option here which is interesting. It's called artboards. I'll show you in a little bit what the difference is. So I'm just going to leave it as is and here we go. And here is my workspace. So in Photoshop, it's called a canvas and all my workspace around it. Now here, automatically, no matter what, if you have nothing on it, you're going to have one layer and it's going to be locked. That's all you have to do to get rid of that lock is click on it once. And now you can work with that layer. You could add obviously more layers and all that. But I do want to show you that artboard feature now as well. If I go to my drop down menu of my layer panel, I could actually see new artboard or artboard from layers. So if I want to make artboard from layers, meaning I've selected multiple layers, I'm going to add a few boxes here. Okay, so all those now, what I can do, I can select all of those. I just select the top one, hold down shift and select the bottom one, or I could hold down one and hold down command and select the others. And now I can go to the drop down menu here and click on artboard from layers. And what it does, it says, what do you want to name this artboard? I can name it whatever I want. Let's just call it purple for now and custom. And this is the width right now as well. I'll say, okay, good. Now it's an artboard. So if I click on that artboard, I open it up and those are the layers inside of the artboard. Let's say I want to make a new artboard. I'll go to new artboard and I'll call this one orange. And now I have another artboard right here. Just like an illustrator, we could actually have multiple artboards, but it does work a little bit differently here in Photoshop. So I could actually select one of these. Let's pretend I select this one here and move it around. And the thing about the workspace in Photoshop, this workspace, you cannot see anything. It does not allow you to actually put anything on the workspace like it does in Illustrator or InDesign. If I actually move this up here, it actually gets cut off. It's almost like the whole thing is in, like in trim view, like an Illustrator or preview mode in InDesign where you're actually not able to see anything on the workspace. Now the pixels are still there. You just can't see them because that's the way Photoshop works. And if I were to drag this over to the other artboard, and as I do that, you saw first it wasn't letting me, and now it's showing me. And now look at the layer panel, it actually is on that artboard, so you could work with it that way too. But let's start over again, file, new. This time I am gonna add an artboard, just one artboard. It only allows you one artboard at a time, and I'll just say create. And here's my artboard automatically. And once again, if I wanna add more artboards, I could just add more artboards. Working with Photoshop, you have the same panels uh, like um, as Illustrator and InDesign that you do in a lot of the programs. You can just access the different panels that we are able to see that we normally would get in our window. So under window, which is a very common title that we're going to see in our Adobe programs, you're going to see all the different panels that are allowed to be on your workspace. So you're going to have even more uh, chances to change things using the panel. So if I want to open my brushes, I could open up my brushes and there's all my different brushes, a lot of different things going on there. You'll have quicker access to certain tools as well, but the panels will allow you to uh, have even more uh, options for 
for different, a lot of different things actually. So right now I have my tool panel open, which is a common thing here, obviously. I have my layer panel. So this is how I like to set myself up. I definitely like to um, have my layers panel as full as I can get it because I'm always using that quite a bit. And then I'm gonna have a few extras open just like I have here. I'm gonna have my swatches and uh, properties and well even history yeah history is a very important one too to go back so you can uh, kind of go through all those undos a navigator I don't use too often but all in all paragraph and character very popular ones to use for myself in Photoshop but just looking quickly how panels can can be used we can move them around this way by just clicking on this little area here this little texture there you can move them around or even just grab the empty space here you can close them and if you accidentally close any panel you go to window and open it back up and this one happens to be the uh, tools so there I am and the tools are back and same with these if I click on this double arrow now I could actually change up the way it is shown so if I click up that way now they're actually opened up uh, properly uh, the way or I could close them that way it kind of opens and closes them now the other thing I can click on each individual one if I'm in this state I can actually move these around to where I want if I want to click it and actually have like a separator bar I drop it down a little lower so say the paragraph and the character panel I want them to be together but on their own separate line and there I go and I can move those around or separate them and, and once again open them up any way I want each panel usually comes with a drop down, a little flyout menu that has more options. So there's even more things you could do. And on occasion, if you have the certain um, tool open, so the character panel, if I click on a some text and just my lower mipsum shows up, well, part of that comes up here on the control panel uh, that I could actually see uh, some of those options here, right in here. And same goes for the properties panel. The properties panel will also show me some of those options once I have a certain layer selected. So if I have a type layer selected, type properties will show up in the properties panel, plus I have the character panel, and plus because I have the, the type tool selected, I could obviously change things here too. So there's a lot of options, even though sometimes it looks overwhelming. If I do something here, it actually changes it here and it changes it here too and vice versa so it's always kind of interesting where you can make many changes in many different places but it all realistically you can do it in one spot and it does the same thing so that's kind of a good thing about uh certain panels uh so you have your drop downs you can collapse them and you can kind of organize yourself a little bit better just by moving things around uh so if you close them you know how to open them and you know how to open them if they're not there and that's how the panels work in general just moving them around and making sure your workspace is as clean as it can possibly be looking at just the toolbar itself as i mentioned you could have a few different formations of that i always like this one because i could access these uh, a little bit better if it's too small it's a little harder to so they're a little bit bigger which is great now as opposed to illustrator indesign we have these two options these are not uh, stroke and fill anymore in Photoshop they're foreground and background you could double click on them and change it any color you want of course and same with that and you could reverse them the same way but now we're not working with fills and strokes uh, that's something a little bit different with some other tools we're just looking at foreground and background here but another thing you might see is that my toolbar probably doesn't look like your toolbar which is fine because now Photoshop has a, a major editing part of toolbars where you could really add a certain amount of tools or take some away this little three dot here will allow you to edit your toolbar. So I've actually taken a few tools away here that I don't really use often at all. But if I do want to access them, I still have access to them, which is really great. So I can just double click on the, um, three, dot, the three dots and it's going to take me to all the extra ones I have. Now, if I want to edit the toolbar, I can actually go in here and edit all the things I want and don't want. I could actually move these things around. I don't want the move tool anymore, which would be silly, obviously. But for the most part, I can move it. I'm going to move it back and forth. So if I still want it, this is what shows up on the toolbar. This is the extra tools that you do not see right away, but you still have access to. And down here as well, do I show the three lines? Do I show a few of these different options? You could get rid of those two as well. A worst case, if you did delete that or sh shut that off and you say done now it doesn't show up anymore but if you want to edit your toolbar eh, how do you do that that's okay just go back to edit and you can go to toolbar and now you're back to editing the toolbar again this way so another way to access that as well which is really really nice so just be aware that also once again if you right click or if you hold down your left click you can access all those subsets that you've put together that are in each tool um, whenever you want. So the toolbar is very versatile in Photoshop and very useful to really make it custom for yourself. 
the toolbar also has a kind of certain grouping of tools as well. There's these selection tools we have at the top, and then we have some more or less uh, editing tools, which would be your kind of pixel editing tools. And then we have these shape layer tools, which are more or less like vector tools, which is really interesting in Photoshop, because remember, Photoshop is a raster or a pixel-based program, where Illustrator and InDesign are um, vector-based programs. So just looking up here to select something, uh, to move tool or the artboard tool, make new artboards or uh, play around with certain artboards that you already have set up, or the move tool, just clicking on anything and moving it around. You have different selections here too, rectangular, uh, elliptical marquee, you have your uh, your lasso tool or polygonal, polygonal lasso tool, a few different options there. You have your magic wand tool, which now also you have your object selection tool and quick selection tools. So there's a few different options with your crop tool and now the frame tool as well. You can actually make frames and put pictures inside of frames, which is really, really nice. But then now we have our editing tool. So we have these vector editing tools with our brushes and our content aware or our spot healing brushes, clone stamp, art history tool, eraser tool, eyedropper, which is really nice. And then we have our burn, dodge and sponge and our blur, sharpen and smudge, which you might use from there. Or you might find some effects that work for you as well under filter. And those are those editing tools we have now. Now then we get into our kind of what I would call our vector tools. We have this gradient tool, which not really a vector tool, but it adds gradient, which is nice. But we have our type tool and our pen tool, which is very similar to obviously InDesign and Illustrator with a lot of different options here as well. We have our direct select tool and our path selection tool. So we know all about those from Illustrator and InDesign. And we have our shape tools, rectangle, rounded, rectangle, ellipse, quite a few different ones that we could play with there. So seeing that, if we were to make some of these options here, so let me just make a, a square real quick. Uh, these ones are actually called shape layers. So it's this uh, one up here. You see this little icon here. It's actually considered a shape layer and they, they actually work exactly like uh, vectors where they have paths and you can move those paths around. Uh, that's fine, not a problem, thank you very much. And you could do that, and if you I use the black, I'm actually just selecting the entire shape and I can move it around and however I wanna do that. If I wanna use the pen tool, I can move use the pen tool just the exact same way as I would in, uh, Photoshop, uh, in Illustrator or InDesign, which is really nice. And I could always go back and re-edit any of those paths if I wanted to, uh, which is also another uh, great option. Obviously, if you're gonna make vector-based work, it should obviously be in Illustrator. Uh, it has the best functions for it, uh, but even the type tool. So the type tool, yeah, I clicked on lower mips and that's fine. So I'm just gonna select the layer here and Command T, which is also edit free transform. I'm gonna transform that. Now watch what happens if I um, just scale that up a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna take a look at those edges. Now those edges obviously are pixel edges and they look okay for now as, as you zoom in. That's why we really don't set up any text in uh, Photoshop. We usually do it in Illustrator and InDesign. But if I scale it back down and then scale it back up again, normally what happens in a situation where it's, if it's pixel based, it gets very fuzzy, very blurry. This doesn't, these shape layers are treated like vectors where the edges stay as crisp, as clean as they possibly can. So that's a really good thing about having to resize or scale any of these kind of shapes here because they will resize properly. Uh, there won't be any uh, mess with resolution or blurriness or pixelization, anything like that. They work really, really well. So the tool panel has a lot going on with it still, uh, but it is kind of, set up in different categories I find. And it's good to know what tools can do what for you and which tools, as I mentioned in this uh, little drop down here, certain tools you just don't need or certain tools that are uh, actually keyboard shortcuts. So for me, the hand tool, I never use the hand tool to click on it. I just use the space bar on my keyboard and it helps me move things around if I need to move things around. So there are some options to actually get rid of tools where you don't need them anymore or something else works for you anyway. Looking at just a layer panel, I opened up this file here that has many layers on it. And what I've done here is I've grouped my layers. So there's these are grouped layers. And inside those grouped layers, you see this little arrow here that's pointing to the right. Now, if I point it down, now if I click on it, it's gonna show me the layers inside of those grouped layers. So I have all of these open and these are all the layers that I have available to me on this particular, um, These are all the layers that are available to me uh, that I've made. So anytime you make anything, so if I grab this other shape layer, anytime you make anything, it makes a new layer for it, okay? So here I've made already something for myself. I have this and I have 
um, a few different types of layers. So let's look at the layer panel specifically and see what we're looking at. Layers panel here and it has this little drop down menu. Once again, fly out a lot of different options you can work with in the layer panel. There's a lot. We're going to cover some. So in my title, uh, I have all these layers, the group layers, which we already went through, and the layers that are inside of those group layers. I'll show you how to make group layers in a second as well. Here we have different ways on how we can actually organize our layers, the different types of layers that Photoshop has. You could organize it by uh, kind, name, effect. So there's a different ways you could look at, if you especially have a lot of layers in one document, this is a great way to help you search for cer certain ones. But here are the different types of layers. You could have a pixel layer. So pixel layer are anything made of pixels. So pictures like this, raster graphics. Then you're gonna have uh, adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are different adjustments you can make to those. I'll go through that in a second. Type layers, shape layers, and smart objects. So let's just look at each of those individually. So if I click on, so let's just look at those individually. So if I click on the uh, pixel layers, this is my current pixel layer, this one right here, and it only shows me this one right now. So this is my pixel layer made up of obviously pixels, it's, it's a raster graphic, and it just shows me those. If I click on now my adjustment layer, these are just adjustments. So this is an adjustment layer I made that can be found right here. It's down here, and if I turn it on and off, you'll see what it does. I made just a hue, a saturation, uh, and brightness um, layer adjustment layer that only affects this layer because I made a clipping mask. Now quickly to make a clipping mask, if you hold on option and hover between the two layers, I can shut it off. If I want this layer just to affect this layer, I hold on option, hover between the two layers, click in between the two layers and I've made a clipping mask. Now this adjustment layer only affects this. If I want, I could click on that adjustment layer and I could change up anything I want. Change up the hue, change up the saturation, change up the lightness, anything I want. I'm going to obviously undo all that because that is a little too much, but that is what the adjustment layer does. Now there are many adjustment layers and here's how you add them. Down here, the very same symbol that what it looks like is down here at the layer panel. If I click on adjustment layers, I have access to add a full uh, canvas size, solid color, gradient, or pattern. And I can change up all these different adjustments and add them, change them to make different effects and styles on certain raster graphics. I could also find those under um, image and adjustments. I could also find those under window and adjustments. There's a few different ways to do it. Usually there's two or three ways to find uh, one specific thing you're looking for. So those are, those are adjustment layers. Uh, next, I'm gonna look at uh, a few different ones here. The, the type layer, so I have some type there. But you're gonna say, well, this is type two. Why isn't this showing up? Well, this I say specifically as a smart object, which I'll get to in just a second. So these are the text layers. Once again, you wanna access it, just double click on it. You could access it. If you don't wanna double click on a type layer from here, just double click on it here with your move tool and it will automatically select them uh, just as if you would have the, the type tool selected and click and drag and select there as well. So that's another little extra thing you could do. Just click on your move tool, double click on your type and it will help you just select the type automatically. Uh, the other option we have here is looking at just the uh, shape objects. So the, the shape layers, the, what they call them, is they're kind of like, as I mentioned, they're just vector. They, they feel like vector shapes, even though they're not vector with those clean edges. But this is made of that, uh, a shape layer. I could click on the direct select tool and I could actually select the points and move the points around however I want, uh, however I wish to do that, just like an illustrator. So we have those options here in Photoshop as well. And now we also have a smart object. We have a couple smart objects here. And you can tell what kind of object they are just by looking at the little icons here that are a part of those, uh, the part of the layer, the picture in the layer shows you what it's all about. So smart objects, I'm gonna make another video for that, specifically that just talks about smart objects and all the different things you could do about them. But they are um, great tools to use in Photoshop, there's specific types of objects that are very um, versatile and very useful in making, quite frankly, anything in Photoshop. So another type of object or another type of layer we could look at there. So I'm just gonna shut that off and now I have access to all of them. So once again, you could tell that you have the little layer there. That's a smart object. This is obviously a type layer. This is a shape layer. These are smart objects, an adjustment layer. So there's a few different things you could do. Uh, just by looking at the different types of layers you could access. Now here we have our blending mode. And let me explain blending mode really quick. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer of a solid color. It's just a solid color, let's just make it that blue or that purple, doesn't matter. And it's on top of just the picture. 
because it sees that it's right there uh, on top of the clipping of the adjustment layer and just the layer of the pixel layer there. So what I'm going to do with the blending mode is I'm just going to click on the blending mode and I'm going to scroll through each one and see what it does. And right now it's not doing much. Okay, I get to darken. So it's going to start interacting or blending with the layer below. So that's what it does. And now you're going to find one that you might really like. You're going to find one that you could play around with. And what if I go to, uh, you know, play around and see what they all do? Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, and maybe you might find one that really works for you. Or maybe you find some that are close, but not great, but that's okay. Because let's just say I go to soft light and if I turn it on and off, yes, I see there's a difference. I kind of like what it does, but the great thing here is that I can change the opacity of just that layer. So this is where we change that transparency of the opacity of layers. So I could actually bring it down using my arrow keys, or I can obviously uh, just use it down here in the slider, click on that and I'm sliding it down. And now I'm getting a little bit more or less of what that layer does. And the same thing goes for any layer, quite frankly, with the transparency. I click on this layer and now I can change the transparency of that layer. So it will change that to zero if I want or bring it all the way up to 100. So you could actually change the transparency, the opacity of any individual layer, which is great, or the group of that. So if I have many things in here right now, the background in the background layer, group layer, I have a um, smart object there, this this piece right here, this background piece. I have the new layer I just made plus the adjustment plus this. If I actually click on the grouped layer, I could actually change the opacity of the entire grouped layer. Okay, so that's a really nice function as well. So we have all these layers and all these different things. Normally what we see in layers, obviously we see the uh, visibility and invisibility as well. So I could shut off the invisibility if I want. If I just want to access one layer, I could hold down option and click on one layer and only that layer will be active, which is nice too. And there's an option to lock some of these as well. So if I want to lock um, a particular group or if I want to lock a particular layer, I can just click on that and lock it and now you can't move it. So short hills, if I click it, it will never let me move it. Uh, which fine, when that's all I have to do to unlock it, click on it again, and it'll be unlocked, okay? So that's how we lock, unlike InDesign and Illustrator where it has a separate little piece here to lock things, this is how we lock here. Now the fill is an interesting one where we could actually make a, another shape here. It has a fill on it and I could actually remove that fill or, or drop down the opacity of that fill. Okay, so that whole fill is gone. It's actually, I shouldn't say opacity because this is the opacity change. This is actually getting rid of the specific fill if I don't want that fill anymore and bringing it down. But it is transparency and opacity that is actually bringing it down. So that's kind of interesting too, how to play with certain fills on certain objects. So I'll just get rid of that for now. Uh, those are some of the things you see at the top. At the bottom here, there's a few other options and they are, some can be useful all the time, some you might not ever use, but obviously, you know, if I want to get rid of this, I can just throw it out, click on it, trash can, say I'm just going to cancel that, or I could just go here and I could delete a group as well. So you can delete layers or groups, whatever you want. Uh, you could add a new layer, so that's the same thing up here, new layer. I can make a new folder, so that's a new folder. I can make, as I showed before, an adjustment layer. I could add new adjustment layers. And here's the mask. I can automatically add a mask to something. And to go through masks really quickly, I can click on, say, this layer here, and I'm gonna add a mask. And we see what it added, just like this and just like this. These are masks. So we see the little link here, and we see a white little um, box here that shows that this is the mask. Now, it's very important to understand that this is a mask and this is me accessing the actual picture see how there's a little border around it this is me accessing the picture accessing the mask so now i'm just working with the mask and the only way to work on masks is to paint white or black on them usually you could obviously graze in between but for the most part we're adding white or black and because this mask is currently white that means it can see everything once you add black to a mask that means it hides something so if i grab my brush tool real quick change my foreground to black and i start painting i'll just make this a little bit bigger i start painting it's actually going to start erasing or hiding some of that area now obviously my brush right now is at 50 percent if i make it 100 percent i can actually start erasing obviously more and it gets rid of that now if i want to bring that all back i can throw the mask out or i can paint in white now and I bring it all back. So masks are very important in Illustrator or in Photoshop and actually quite frankly Illustrator too. But that's how we make a mask just by clicking on that button and now we can start hiding or 
taking things, hiding or showing things uh, on certain layers. Uh, then we have our FX panel, which is actually called Layer Styles. So you could actually duplicate, or, or sorry, double click on any layer and change something out about it. So what of this title, I'm gonna duplicate here. So uh, I keep on saying duplicate. I'm gonna double click on this and I'm going to access Layer Styles or I can click on it here. So if I double click here, open space, it accesses it. If I sh click here, uh, I could actually choose which one I want. Let's say I want the drop shadow. It opens it up here, it's the same thing. So now I could add a drop shadow, outer glow, pattern overlay, gra gradient overlay, color overlay, a lot of different options here. And then you have all the controls right here. So it's kind of interesting what we can do with layer styles as well. There's a lot to them. I could shut them on and off. I could throw them out. I can duplicate them. Say I want this other type also to have that same effect. I can go to my, I should have to say call that body my body type and actually click and drag holding down option click and drag it onto that layer and now that is also affected with the exact same effect also i could right click on the uh, layer style and copy it and make it a part of many things uh, if i wanted to click on phone and i'll paste the layer style sorry paste the layer style and now it's a part of that one too so there are a few different ways to play with layers. There's a lot going on that you play with layers almost as much as you play with the artboard, which is really interesting. And so that's something we could do as well. Now, some effects can be a little bit more, a little too much. So that's why we really have to control our effects and how we play with them. And there is a way obviously to duplicate layers. Very simply, you could obviously just duplicate a group or duplicate a layer. If I'm clicked on a layer, I could duplicate the layer. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm just going to, let's say I'm gonna duplicate this layer. I'm gonna duplicate it. So now it is, I'll just say yes, okay. And it duplicates that layer. Great, I'm gonna undo that. Another way to do that, just like in Illustrator and InDesign, to duplicate anything, you hold on Option, click and drag, and now I'm duplicating that thing. You can see my cursor is turning into double arrows. Now I've duplicated that, okay? So now it's a duplicated uh, thing and I can now move that around, whatever. I'm gonna delete that, just pressing delete on my keyboard. Another way to duplicate, keyboard shortcut, Command J. I've duplicated it, great. All right, so another way to duplicate, click and drag that piece onto a new layer and now it's duplicated. A lot of different ways to duplicate and to throw things out. If I don't like it anymore, I could drag it to the trash, I could click on the trash icon, or I could say delete the layer, whatever I wanna do. Another interesting one here as well is to move things around, move layers around. So if I want the background now to be for some reason at the front, at the top, if anything at the bottom of the layer is furthest away from the viewer. Anything at the top layer is closest to the viewer. So if I bring the background to the very top, look how I click and drag it. I can actually put it inside of another group, which I don't want to do, which I just did accidentally. Commands that I'm just going backwards. If I click and drag onto a group, see the whole layer highlights in blue, then around it, I can actually drop it into another group layer. Or if I just go in between, it shows me the highlight there, I go in between. Now if I bring it all the way to the top, now this background grouped layer is now the thing that's closest to the viewer. So therefore, I cannot see these things. So if I drag it back down to the bottom, that's how it works. So that's also the same with arranging, like we're used to in InDesign and Illustrator. If I go to layer and go to arrange and bring to front, so or bring to back or send to back, whichever you prefer. So if I just do this, I click on this one layer and I go to layer, arrange, bring to front. Watch what it actually does. It just brings it up in on top of those layers, meaning it, it's closer to the viewer than these layers, okay? So I'm just gonna bring that back down and, and do that and have it a, uh, appear just for that. Uh, and same that goes with uh, this as well. So right now the color bars there, I'm gonna move it up, move it around. And well, it's right now it's in behind some of these things. So if I wanna bring it to the front, I would actually just have to click and drag and bring it to the front. Now you can't really tell, but because it, it's the same color, but it, now it's in front. Uh, let me try, once again with the picture, it's kind of ideal. If I want, I can just click and drag this up, and now it's gonna be on top of certain things. If I want it below, send it backwards, I just send it to the back or drag it down. So that's arranging and how we work with arranging in uh, Photoshop. Now the other one is grouping. Now obviously we can just group our elements here, which we've done. So let's pretend I added a few more options here. All right, I'm just going to now make a few different shapes because I'm going to show you how to group. So I'm going to make a new layer. 
and I'm just going to say okay. Nothing is in that layer and I'm just going to click and drag a shape and now that shape is in that layer. And I'm just gonna duplicate this for now. I'm just gonna hold down Option and Shift. And once again, I could do that up here too. Option and Shift, click and drag. And now I have a few different layers. So now these layers right now, let's pretend they are outside. They're not in any type of group. I could group these layers like I normally would in Illustrator or InDesign as well. I'm just going to select the layers and Command G. And look what happened up here in the layer panel. It actually grouped them all together. Now the same thing is true if I'm just here and I'm in the layer panel, I could actually say the same thing, new group from layers, and it's gonna group all those layers together, and that's the same way. So grouping actually works the same way, but grouping is actually the layer panel grouping them all together in their own grouped layer. So that's grouping as well. The layer panel, there's a lot happening with the layer panel. You should also ha always have it as big as you can make it uh, so you can play around their layers and if you ever have too many layers there's a nice way to find them all and play with them when you do look at each individual group layer you're going to see the blending mode is on pass through pass through just means that there could be multiple uh, different blending modes inside of that group layer that that group layer can handle so all of them will be passed through so if you're ever too uh, uncertain about that which is not a problem uh, but each individual layer will probably be on normal uh, or whichever one you have it on with just looking at aligning in Photoshop, it's not the same as Illustrator and InDesign. It's actually a little less. You can't do as many things with aligning. It's still great, but not as good. So I have these three rectangles that I just made and I can move them around. And the way I select things is a little bit differently too. So automatically, if I click on this tool here, the move tool, you're gonna have the option here to auto select. That's usually the default method. You click on something, you move it. Click on something, you move it. If I click on this, it accesses it here in the layer panel. I don't like that because normally when I'm working with Photoshop, I'm working with transparencies. I'm working with something a little bit different like that. So if I auto select something in a transparency, what's it actually selecting, right? So I like to shut that off and instead of uh, auto select, I command click. So I'll click on something, press command, and then it moves it. That actually helps me a little bit more when I'm moving specific items around in Photoshop. So I'm a big fan of that. Either way, to group things, or sorry, to align things, I'm gonna look at that align tool. I have a few things open. Now we look at the align panel here, right at the top. There's no other way to align, really. There's no align uh, panel. There's nothing like that. So what we do is we use the control panel up here to help us. But if I click on something or one thing, the align panel is grayed out. It doesn't even work. But I do have these little three dots here. The three dots actually will show me even more align panel options like we're used to. But if I look to align to, that's all you have options to is align to the selection or align to canvas. So if I'm going to align to selection, the thing I have to do is I have to have at least two objects selected. I can't just have one object selected and it's going to, you know, align to the page or align to whatever I want. I actually have to have two objects selected and I did that. So I select one, I could hold down uh, command and click another one or click another one. But if I want to hold two, I hold down shift and I click on another one, hold down shift and click another one. So now all three are selected. So now I'm aligning to the selection. So here I can align them all center. If I move one over, I can align all of them. I could also select them here if I want, align them all to the right hand side, or I can line them all to the top, which obviously would just make it look like there's one. So the few different options there, I could also disperse them in a certain way. Uh, if I wanted to go here and say, I want them all to be uh, same spacing in between, which is great. Um, that's great. Now the other option is align to canvas. So we could actually just say this, I've selected one object, as I can see here, it's only one is selected, and it's still not, it's not grayed out anymore. There is an option for me to align, and look, I can just align to the canvas and select, and now that is just aligned. If I wanna select this one, but align it to the left, it'll snap it to the left side of the canvas. And same with this one, it's aligned to the canvas, nothing else is selected, I could align it to the right. So we still do have options in here to look at different ways to align, but there's no key object alignment, and in that I'm always a big fan of, but these do offer us great ways to align, and especially snap, if we need to snap, we can go to view, and we could snap or snap to, which also helps us align certain things in certain ways as well. So right now, if I got snap or snap to the layers or document bounds, normally the guides are already selected that we could do that as well, uh, which is a really nice uh, option uh, as, as well. 
quickly looking at the type tool, if I click on the type tool, uh, it gives me that option just to click and just start typing if I want to. And obviously Lorem Ipsum shows up right away, which is that new feature, it's, it's pretty great. The other option I have with the type tool is just to click and drag. If I click and drag, I can actually make my type box, uh, a box that it's set in, a frame if you will, and I could actually see that. Now you can see that normally in Illustrator or um, InDesign, we have that little red plus sign, but here in Photoshop, it just converts that little uh, anchor point on the right hand side of the bounding box, the right corner, bottom corner, it shows a plus sign, meaning there is more information inside there just to drag it out to get all that information. And once again, if I just move it around, that's fine. If I want to access it again and edit it, I could double click on the actual icon for the T here and I have access it. Now the other way, I could actually just use my move tool, hover over it, double click, and now I've also accessed that again. So there's a couple different ways to access that information. Uh, another way, obviously, to play around uh, with the actual type, you have it in your control panel, you have it down here on your character panel, if you can't see that, go to window and character. And it's not under type or anything down here, it's under character. And you can play around with your normal um, options here for type. You have your drop down, so you have even more options there, how you want certain things to look. Uh, a lot of different options here, which is great. And same here, and also with the properties panel. Properties panel allows you to move and change up a few things. If you can't see everything, just click on these three dots and you go from there. You also have some paragraph options as well, how you want the certain paragraphs to, to look, to feel. Uh, alignment options and uh, indent options, which is nice too. But once again, you can see that on the properties panel, but not so much here on the control panel. So it's always nice to have these open so you do have more options to see how those things work. Now with the swatch panel and the color panel, a little bit different here in Photoshop than in Illustrator and InDesign, but it's pretty great what you can do with the color panel in Photoshop. So I'm gonna to go to window and I'm gonna open up my color panel color, and I'm also gonna open up my swatch panel at the same time. The swatch panel is different. It opens up a little bit differently, it shows a little bit differently, but it's totally fine because it still offers you the same idea and what we're looking for sometimes is just some swatches. Now here we have a lot of different swatches. We have our RGB swatches, and these are how they're organized. So there's already a lot laid out for us, but we don't need all of these options, obviously. And I think I've duplicated up a few of mine anyway, so I have these double the dark and double that. I can get rid of those, that's not a problem. But if I do wanna make my own, it's pretty easy. I can just make my own new swatch group and I can say, yeah, it's mine. And I can obviously create new swatches or if I just wanted the CMYK ones, I can bring those down here and say, you know, those are part of my swatch group and I can play around with that, whatever, and use those. The other thing what we can do now uh, is go to our color. So this is pretty great what we can do with our color panel as well is you have a lot of different options to look at in our color panel, how you want to perceive that color. So if you can go to the Hue Cube, which we're normally used to seeing, uh, our saturation, our tints, our shades, um, and obviously all our hues there as well. The Brightness Cube, which is another one, uh, but I'm on black right now, so that's not gonna really help out too much. There we go. And just change the foreground, and now I can see all the difference there. Uh, and the color wheel, we're familiar with the color wheel. Once again, we can change our hue, which is that going all the way around. We can change up our saturation and we can change, change up our brightness as well. So that's pretty cool how that is very controlled there, but it continues on. There's a grayscale slider, RGB sliders. So if we're familiar with RGB and how we want to play around with that, we can, or we select something here and it moves it for us. And the same goes for our HSB. Uh, so that works with our hue, saturation, and brightness again. And we have our CMYK slider. So if we're doing something for print and want to be specific to that, we can find that as well. And there's a few others, uh, lab and web, and then you could actually go to RGB spectrum, CMYK spectrum. There's a few different ways to pick that. So if I am happy with this color, I'll say okay. And then hopefully now with my swatch panel open, I can add that swatch and it should add to mine and there it is. So now I can use that swatch. And if you wanna add it to your CC libraries as well, you can. So I can use that swatch now, just click on something. Uh, because this is a smart object, uh, let me actually click on this because this is a shape layer perfect. I'm just gonna double click on the icon and when I do that, once I click on the icon, I can now change the color of that. Uh, I'm gonna change it to potentially my color that I just chose and okay, and there you go. Now my color has changed and that's how we can add colors from the color panel, how we can add them into our swatch panel and keep ourselves nice and organized in our swatches panel and then just go from there. So that's how the color and swatch panel work.
If I just want to add a gradient to something, there's a couple different ways to do it. And I'll show you both, but there is one better way that I feel. So I have this object here, uh, once again, that I'm just going to play around with. And if I want to add just a gradient to this, I don't want it to be this color. It's a little bit different than in Photoshop and in uh, Illustrator. So what I can do is I do have this gradient panel here, but as of for um, under window, there is gradients there as well. But it doesn't open up that kind of really nice gradient panel that we're used to seeing where it controls the gradient. It just gives you a bunch of different options for gradients. So I'm just going to choose a, a preset of this green and that's fine and it changes that and that's great uh, however if I want to control it a little bit more let's say I'm going to use my gradient tool I can click on my gradient tool and what I can do with that is currently nothing because this is a shape layer the gradient tool only works on pixel layers so I'm gonna to have to convert this and that's fine I could always uh, change it back or duplicate it but I, I can't change it back with the edits I'm gonna make but I can actually just change it now by converting it I'm just gonna right click and click on rasterize layer and what that does it converts it into a pixel layer which is totally fine so now with the gradient layer I should be able to click and drag that and, and see what I come up with well it doesn't really do that it kind of does the whole canvas for me which is not really what I wanted so in order to do that properly I'm just going to undo command Z I'm just going to duplicate that so now I have these two uh, layers here Command J, and now I have that so I'm gonna do the same thing with that gradient layer and I'm just gonna do this and it should change everything which is that happens but that's okay what I can do is I can make that clipping mask as I mentioned before hover between the two layers make sure this gradient is on top of this shape and just make a clipping mask and now it will go inside that and I can control this gradient here any way I want if I want to make it like this or change it like this uh, with my gradient tool playing around with it I can do that that's one way to do it, which I don't love, and it's not the best way to do it, but it is an option, that's for sure. What I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to delete these two things, and I'm going to bring back my own color bar by clicking on the rectangle tool, which is a shape layer, and I'm going to make that again, and that's fine. What I can do instead to make a gradient, uh, I could actually just double click here, and when I double click there or click on this FX, it brings me to layer styles. Once again, a lot of different options with layer styles. I'm going to click on gradient overlay, and here is my normal gradient structure that I have. So I'm going to play around with this here. So what I could do, I'm going to bring up the opacity all the way because I want that gradient to be as strong as it can be. And I'm going to play around with the gradient. And here, once again, I have all my defaults anyways that were just shown to me uh, as well. So I'll click on whichever, doesn't matter. I'm going to need a little bit of contrast just because of that color. I'll just say OK for now. And I could once again, I can play around with it, how I want it to show up. If I want some of it to be transparency, I click on the top for the transparencies. I click on the bottom for the colors. So the top, let's just say I don't want it to have any color. I want it to be zero. So now the below color shines through, comes through. So I'll just say, um, OK, and I'm going to play around with the angle here. Obviously not a great angle, but I can move around the angle this way. And if I want to reverse it, I can reverse it. If I want the scale to be very smooth or far more abrupt, whichever way I want. OK, so there's a lot of options here that we can play with the gradient. Just say OK. And there's my gradient tool. So a gradient. Uh, there's a few different ways to do it. But uh, maybe playing with the layer styles might give you a little bit more control over what you want. But if you want to be very specific, you can do it this way. Use the gradient tool, but it only works with pixel type layers. If I just want to add a gradient to something, there's a couple different ways to do it. And I'll show you both, but there is one better way that I feel. So I have this object here, uh, once again, that I'm just going to play around with. And if I want to add just a gradient to this, I don't want it to be this color. It's a little bit different than in Photoshop and in uh, Illustrator. So what I do is I do have this gradient panel here but as of for um, under window there is gradients there as well but it doesn't open up that kind of really nice gradient panel that we're used to seeing where it controls the gradient it just gives you a bunch of different options for gradients so I'm just gonna choose a, a preset of this green and that's fine and it changes that and that's great uh, however if I want to control it a little bit more let's say I'm gonna use my gradient tool I can click on my gradient tool and what I can do with that is currently nothing because this is a shape layer, the gradient tool only works on pixel layers. So I'm going to have to convert this. And that's fine. I could always uh, change it back or duplicate it. But I, I can't change it back with the edits I'm going to make. But I can actually just change it now. By converting it, I'm just going to right click and click on rasterize layer. And what that does, it converts it into a pixel layer, which is totally fine. So now with the gradient layer, I should be able to click and drag that and, and see what I come up with. Well. 
it doesn't really do that. It kind of does the whole canvas for me, which is not really what I want. So in order to do that properly, I'm just going to undo Command Z. I'm just going to duplicate that. So now I have these two uh, layers here. Let me Command J, and now I have that. So I'm going to do the same thing with that gradient layer, and I'm just going to do this. And it should change everything, which is, that happens, but that's okay. What I can do is I can make that clipping mask, as I mentioned before. Hover between the two layers, make sure this gradient is on top of this shape, and just make a clipping mask and now it will go inside that and I can control this gradient here any way I want if I want to make it like this or change it like this uh, with my gradient tool playing around with it I can do that that's one way to do it which I don't love and it's not the best way to do it but it is an option that's for sure what I'm gonna do instead I'm just gonna delete these two things and I'm gonna bring back my own color bar by clicking on the rectangle tool which is a shape layer and I'm gonna make that again and that's fine what I can do instead to make a gradient, uh, I can actually just double click here. And when I double click there or click on this FX, it brings me to layer styles. Once again, a lot of different options with layer styles. I'm gonna click on gradient overlay. And here is my normal gradient structure that I have. So I'm gonna play around with this here. So what I could do, I'm gonna bring up the opacity all the way because I want that gradient to be as strong as it can be. And I'm gonna play around with the gradient. And here, once again, I have all my defaults anyways that were just shown to me uh, as well. So I'll click on whichever, doesn't matter. I'm Gonna need a little bit of contrast just because of that color I'll just say okay for now and I could once again I could play around with it how I want it to show up if I want some of it to be transparency I click on the top for the transparencies I click on the bottom for the colors so the top let's just say I don't want it to have any color I want it to be zero so now the below color shines through comes through so I'll just say um, okay and I'm gonna play around with the angle here obviously not a great angle but I can move around the angle this way and if I want to reverse it, I can reverse it. If I want the scale to be very smooth or far more abrupt, whichever way I want, okay? So there's a lot of options here that we can play with the gradient and just say, okay, and there's my gradient tool. So a gradient, uh, there's a few different ways to do it, but uh, maybe playing with the layer styles might give you a little bit more control over what you want. But if you want to be very specific, you can do it this way, use the gradient tool, but it only works with pixel type layers. A few final thoughts on Photoshop that you might come across as well. So looking at that properties panel, if you want to open it once again, you can go to window and you can find properties and it's there. And the properties panel is only getting better and better in all of our, our Adobe programs. And it just gives you quicker access to certain things you might want to find. But the properties panel only works when you click on a layer. If you click on a tool, that doesn't change the property panel. That changes the control panel. So the tools and their options are controlled up here in the control panel, not in the property panel. When you click on a different layer, you'll get different options for it. So right now I'm on a type layer and I get a bunch of different type options. I get my transform, which is great. My character panel shows up, my paragraph panel shows up, and I have some type options and a few other quick actions specific to type. Now, if I click on a smart object, smart object options show up. So I convert, uh, convert to link, convert to layers, edit the contents of my smart object, a few different things there. If I click on a object that is the shape layer, I have options to play around with kind of like a mask that's a part of it. I can feather, feather it out. So this is the color bar. I can feather it out. So now I have a feathered edge on it or I could change up the density, which I right now is 100, and it actually fills up the whole space with that color. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I could add a mask to it, a few different things. Uh, if I click on a pixel layer, a pixel layer shows me a few different options too. So I could actually click on uh, play around the transform, which also shows up, and align and distribute, just like the align would show up there if I had this tool selected. So a few different options there, my adjustment layers, uh, what does it show up? If I click on the adjustment layer, the property panel turns into that adjustment, all those adjustments you can make. If I click on a color fill layer, same idea. So each different type of layer style will open up something different in your property panel. So it's good to use the property panel too, or if you can, access the actual uh, panels that you need to, to work with that. So that's kind of interesting how the property panel works. Very, very useful. Another one I want to talk about are the rulers. So uh, similar to... Uh, in Design and Illustrator, Command R turns off our rulers and toggles them on and on. To make a guide, I would just click and drag over, and that's it. I made my guide, and there it shows up, and I can once again go to view and lock my guides or uh, show guides, all that, all that stuff that we can do as well. The one thing I can't do is actually, if I double click on my ruler, it does something different. It doesn't add, actually add another guide. If I double click, 
it actually opens up my guide preferences. So if I want to change my uh, the color of them or if they're going to be changed from pixels to inches or whatever I want to do. Uh, that actually comes in common, uh, come in handy when if I'm working for something for print, maybe I change it to inches. If I'm working for something for web, maybe I turn it to pixels. Uh, so we can actually change up a few different things here, which is pretty cool. So I just changed it to inches and now that makes a little bit more sense for this particular piece. Uh, so that's how we bring out guides if we ever need to bring out guides for whatever reason. And we could snap to guides and all that as well. The last thing I want to mention is embedding. So I brought this image in and that's fine. And we've spoken about linking and embedding before. But the issue is that, uh, you know, we know how to link, we know how to embed in Illustrator and in InDesign. But with Photoshop, you're not really linking at all. You're just embedding. There are ways to link in smart, uh, smart objects, but really we're just bringing in our pixel or raster graphics. You're just embedding them. That's it. So I have this object here, this, sorry, this picture here. I could actually, with this open, I could click and drag this picture and it shows me it's about to add it. So it adds it in and there it is. And look what it does actually. It fits the artboard that I currently have or the canvas that I currently have. It fits it in perfectly. Okay, that's cool. So that's me dragging it in directly to an actual document. And there it is. Actually, I'm going to bring it right to the top so you can see exactly. And that's what it does. I'm going to hide that for a second. Uh, the other way I'm going to do this, I could either do file, open, and I could open this or I could click and drag it and bring it directly into Photoshop on the icon. And then the icon, what's going to happen, it's going to open up its, in its own tab. Just as if I went to file open, it would open it up in its own tab just like this. Well, that's great. Okay. A couple different ways to bring this image into my, another document, any other document. I can click and drag it and drop it in. And there it is. I clicked and dragged it. Okay. Let me undo that. I could also click off of the link, make sure it's not locked. I can now copy a layer. I'm going to command C copy, bring it into my, go to my new document and command V. Let me shut that up. Command V. And now it's there as well. Now let me zoom out. Command minus. Remember when I dra dragged this one directly into the document and it made it fit the actual art of the canvas? Well, that's not the actual pixels that the picture is made of. It's actually much bigger than that. If I hit uh, command T or free transform, it's actually bigger. So it's ideal to open up the object or the picture on its own file open and then bring it in than it is to click and drag it into a, a new document because it makes it fit that document where this gives you all the actual pixels. So that's very nice. So I'm just could size it up. I could do whatever I want, but watch what else, what else happens here. I'm just going to leave it alone. If I throw this picture out into the trash, there's no linking issues. There's no issues of it. Oh, I don't know where it is. This is just a, um, a rendering of it or, or uh, sorry, a preview of the picture. It has to be linked. Not at all. When you bring something into Photoshop, it's embedded. It's a part of the document. So you don't have to worry about any linking issues at all with Photoshop.